So, what does a chair and a toilet paper tube have to do with each other? Stay tuned and you'll find out. So, are the, doll the dolls in your dollhouse would probably really appreciate this nice comfy chair. And it's really super simple. And it's recycling. So let's get started. First thing we need to do is measure up from one end of your toilet paper tube and pick the end that's the try and pick a tube that's more round like this one. We're going to measure up from one end one and one fourth inches. And we're going to draw a line all the way around the tube, just like I've done there. Then very carefully, so you don't cut yourself, use a craft knife, whatever kind of craft knife you're comfortable with. And cut on that nice line that you just drew. So that you end up with a piece of tube that's one and one fourth inches long. Now we have a little bit of drawing to do. We need to get out a piece of paper, just a piece of plain paper. We need to draw three lines. The first line is one and one fourth inch just up from the edge. The next one is an inch away and another one another inch away. We'll use our scissors and we will cut on this line or as close to the line as we can cut. Now while we've got the paper here we're also going to trace the end of our tube and make some circles on the paper. I'll show you why in a minute. Now we'll take our paper and we'll wrap it around our tube, go around the part you've cut off or the part that's already that's left. Trim it so it's just about the same length. So it just barely goes around the tube. Now we need to fold this in half and then in half again. So it's so we're marked in fourths. Now we have now our piece is divided into four equal parts. We need to just cut off one of those. Toss it away. It's done. Now we have three. Now here's your wide space, that's your base. Keep and dried, which is the base side of your paper. Very important for our next step. And we fold this in half. Should have done this, bit, this part out. Double check that the wide spot is on the far end. And on these, this fold that we have, we're going to kind of round the corner and right now on the round part we're going to we're going to come around the corner and we will cut on that fold and then on that top line and round the front off again and you'll have a shape like this pattern that you'll now use while we have our scissors out we need to cut these round shapes these round to cut way away you need some space around them. And you're going to cut around them quite a way so you have extra space. Now the next thing you'll need is you'll need a piece of cardboard. I'm just using, I grabbed this out of my recycling. It's a box that can't, the cat food came in. You'll lay your pattern down and you'll trace around it. And you'll also trace the end of your tube twice and you need to cut these out. When you cut them out, they'll look right. So at this point, you should have your little piece of toilet paper tube. Your this is your pat this is now the chair back and two kind of round circles cuz these tubes are never perfectly round. Circles of all the tube and these pieces of light cardboard. Now, remember those round circles that you cut out of the paper? We'll take those and we're going to make little snips. We need to cut up just two 
the line you drew and you no further. And we will use some glue. And I like to start by going cross. Set this down in the middle and start folding up and gluing this on. And the idea is you need to cover both ends just like I've done here. All right, so you put glue all the way around and glue this paper onto the end of our tube. This is now the base of your chair. And since we are working with glue, we need wet wipes. You really should work with a wet wipe in right where you can reach it really easily. Now while this sits across, sits off to the side and dries for a minute, you'll need to take, you'll need your fabric. And choose a piece of fabric that has a really small print of some kind. This particular piece, there's no direction really, it's an all over print, so I didn't have to be really careful as to which way I put my design. You need to trace around your cardboard pattern pieces now. You need to trace both of the circles, each once, and you need to trace this back twice. Then, and you need to leave space between all of these pieces because you need to have, you need to cut away, away from the edges. Then, draw two lines an inch and a quarter apart that are down here with space on both sides of them. And we need to cut these out. Right, now we need to cut out our pieces. Here's our strip of fabric. This will cover our base. We have two circles. And you see how my line, here's the drawn line, and here's where I cut. Here's the drawn line, here's where I cut. Same with this piece, and same with this back piece. I've cut outside the line at least a quarter inch away. I do need to cut one back piece right on the line. This will set aside. Now while we are drawing, we need to draw a line on our back pattern piece. And I like to draw this line on the colored side of my pattern piece. You'll see why in a minute. Draw a line one and one fourth inches up from the bottom. This is the same distance as you cut your tube. See, that line's the same size. Now we need some quilt batting. This is just really lightweight quilt batting. If you know somebody that quilts, you can get a piece from them. If you don't have this, you can use something else that's soft and kind of puffy. You might be able to use those pads that they sell to take nail polish off with, the flat cotton pads. Just find something that's just give a little bit of padding. Now, look at your, your back pattern piece. We need to put glue on here, but only from the line up. This is one of the few times you'll ever see me using glue right out of the bottle. As you know if you watch my videos, I never use glue right out of the bottle. Today I will. Now I'm using just this knitting needle because it's easy to clean and it's straight and strong. It's a good thing to spread your glue. You'll need to spread your glue nice and evenly on the back piece from the line that you drew on up. Lay your spreader down on something safe. I put it on my wet wipe. Line the edge of your quilt batting up with that drawn line and press down. Now take one of your circles, just one of the cardboard circles, put glue on it and again spread it nice and even. Try not to get too much on your fingers and put it down. Then wipe off your tool right away. One of the keys to this project is be as neat as you possibly can. Wipe the glue up every time you touch it. Now we are going to cut. You'll need to use scissors that are pretty sharp to cut this quilt batting. And we cut right along our 
cardboard just as close as we can. And there's the back. And this padded piece will be your seat cushion because you don't want your doll to sit on a hard surface, do you? She wants to be comfy. It actually makes it look a lot more comfortable, even if she doesn't really care. All right, now it's time to put the fabric pieces on. I like to take this base and start, actually, with it. Now, we have these lines. We are going to make sure those lines line up with the top and bottom. We are going to draw one little line of glue there. Make sure we stay lined up with the lines. We're going to anchor that end. And this piece will set up off to the side for a few minutes to set up. We have a lot of gluing to do now. Now, let's take this circle that we didn't pat and one of our round pieces. We need to clip only as far as that line you drew in the fabric. If we tried to fold this over without clipping it, we would have bumps and bunches and it would just be a mess. By clipping, we give the fabric somewhere to go. We make it a lot easier to make a nice smooth finish. Lay this down, fabric down, right side to the table, to your surface, put your cardboard circle on, put a little glue. Now I have my wet wipe right here. It's really important. Using my gluing tool, I'm going to pull up and I'm going to pat them. I find I have more control and I'm able to pull up better with this tool. You can use your fingers if that's what you're more comfortable with. Wipe your fingers. Pick up the glue. Put some glue over here. Do the same thing. Just keep pulling and working. You want to get a nice smooth finish. I like to start with this one because this is actually going to go on the bottom so it's a good place to practice. This one doesn't show as much. Anytime you touch the glue, wipe your fingers. The, big, the thing you can do that will make up the most mess and, make, and ruin this project is get glue on the right side of your fabric. Pull these in. Now, that's, now this piece is all ready to set aside and dry. Set up a little bit anyway. Doesn't need to get all the way dry yet. Now we'll do the other circle. Same thing. Clip all the way around. And it just takes a second. And it doesn't have to be like you see, I didn't cut really precisely a certain dimension away from my line, a certain distance. Just so you've got enough to fold over. Now, the soft padded side goes towards the back side of that fabric. That's really important. Again, a little glue. Pick up your tool, pull the fabric into the glue. It's just the same process over and over put the glue down, you push the fabric into it. If you even think you've touched stickiness, wipe your fingers. set it aside. It's 
a good idea to wipe your tray up a little bit. Now we'll work on this one. Now this area that does not have padding on it, we are going to put quite a bit of glue there. Now, do I need a ton of glue, just enough to cover this area? This will be hidden behind the seat, behind the base. Now, wipe your tool off because you don't want to have that stickiness all over your table. Now, put the back fabric that you cut extra, that you cut a, not right on the line, that down face down, put this down. Now, there will be glue seeping through here. I like to use the side of the needle to kind of roll this. Now wipe the needle. Don't worry that glue seeps through here. It won't show on the finished chair. As you can see, that is actually inside. So, it's fine. Now, turn this over. And we need to anchor our corners first. I like to do the bottom corners first. A little dab of glue in each corner. And pull the fabric at an angle. The nice thing about this really thick glue is it holds really quickly. Wipe your table every time you move this. Because there is a little glue seeping through that bottom. Now, we'll run some glue along the bottom. This will also all be covered up later, but we still want it to be as neat as we can. The glue will hold it flat. Right. Now we need to do some trimming. We take our fabric scissors, we make a couple of notches. I like to do one on each side of that inside corner. And then cut it a little close to that corner, but it'll be okay. We'll still get it pulled over. We've got a corner to go around, so we clipped there. Now we just Put some glue here and fold. Put some glue, fold these fabric pieces over so that they cover. Check your front and your edge. Be sure you wipe the glue up. Use your tool to kind of help you pull that around. Between the glue and your t your fingers and your tool and the glue, this will all stick down really tight and really flat. Again, because it felt like it was sticking to my table, I wipe. Now we do this side. And some glue. Sometimes it seems like some fabrics, the tool is more important than with others. Right, now this is what this looks like. You've got that folded over and it's gluing down. Let that set aside for a few minutes while we work on this. Now, we've got these lines. We are going to, again, clip up to the lines. And I like, I like to work a little bit at a time. Now remember, this is just paper here, so it's not really strong. So don't push really hard. Just enough to make the glue stick. Put your glue on the paper at the top, because that will all be covered up. We don't want to put glue here, except on the back, because it could show through. Now, 
to the other end. You see this is a really quick project. Just be sure you keep your fingers wiped so you don't get glue on the right sides of your fabric. And this main trick is just keep going so that you are staying straight and you are inside those lines so that you don't so it stays nice and straight. And so you end up with enough space on each side. You don't need to make a lot of clips. This fabric is laying really nicely, so I don't need to clip it really close together. If the fabric was thicker, I'd have to make more little clips into it. I think I can get all the way around. Now, when you come back to where you started, you'll cut your fabric off. There. You just wanted to just, you can overlap a little. But you don't want to overlap a lot. That would just be a waste of fabric. Don't worry about gluing here. That will be held down later on our next step. Now, if your fabric had a one-way design, like say it had flowers or something else where you had to be careful of bottom and top, you figure that out here. Otherwise, mine, the design's the same no matter what direction it goes. Lay this down on your counter. Now we're back to this. The same area that you glued down below the padding, you are going to cover with glue again. Yeah, that part's getting a lot of glue, huh? Spread it out. Make sure it comes to this front edge. and wipe this off so we don't get glue. Now, that seam, this is where we seamed it. That needs to be covered. Now, we fold this up and I like to use, oops, I've got glue on my fingers, wipe my fingers dry. I like to use these hair things, these ponytail holders. They're the really small ones and I got a bunch of them at Dollar Tree. But anything you've got, rubber bands, um, whatever you've got that will hold this round. Now I like to take that padded piece and double check. Is this going to fit? Yes, my seat fits. So I like to do this now. I think it really looks better and it keeps it kind of more round. Put plenty of glue in there. Decide if there's a better edge and stick that in and let this dry. This needs to be set off to the side so the glue can dry. Now I have one that has been drying for a while. It's all dry. I did this a couple hours ago. Pull off our little hair ties. And it's okay if they stick a little. Now, that piece of fabric we cut that was the same size, it was cut right on the lines same size as our pattern. That's our back cover. We're going to put glue on the outside and we're going to spread it. Try not to use a whole bunch of glue here, just enough to cover, but get it right to the edges. You want enough that it will hold your fabric and seal the edges down, but not so much that it seeps through too badly. Now, line this up. And pull it tight. Now, some more glue. I like to do about a third of it at a time or so. Maybe almost a half. I don't like to have glue all the way around though at once. I like to 
kind of fiddle with it a little. And this comes all the way around. Sometimes, like this time, I think this one I'll have to um, trim just a little when it gets dry. Let's move that around. And pull it tight. Try and get all your wrinkles out. You'll have to work with it. Then that bottom, where it's got the unfinished edges on, put glue there and glue the unpadded circle. That's your bottom to your chair. And let it dry. And when it gets dry, you might have to go around and, like I've got a string here. This will need to be trimmed. But it's a nice little chair. You can set it off in the corner of your dollhouse or your room box and your dolls will have a nice comfortable place to sit down and relax. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you later. Bye.